praise God, praise God. Let the people of God say amen, amen. I welcome you to the Bread Broadcast, a Bible teaching program from Eternal Food Evangelistic Organization, a unit of Eternal Food Ministry, where we edify, we exhort, and we challenge believers to the Great Commission. Here, we also call sinners to salvation through the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining us. Today, we are going to be talking about Amaziah, King Amaziah. And the topic is in Amaziah's League. In Amaziah's League. And our case study, of course, is King Amaziah. A short reading is 2 Kings chapter 14, verses 1 to 20. 2 Kings 14, 1 to 20. Let us pray. Dear Father God, through our Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, thank you. Because you've got the whole world in your hands. You open your hands and you fulfill the desires of all living things. Thank you for the sunshine. Thank you for the rain. Thank you for life. Oh, Father, even as we have come here to learn from your word, sweet, blessed Holy Spirit, soften the soil of our hearts and let the seed be ingrained and implanted into our hearts that the Lord Jesus be glorified. In Jesus' name, have we prayed. Amen and amen. Our foundation text is 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. 2 Timothy 2, 19. Nevertheless, hallelujah, the solid foundation of God stands, hallelujah, having this seal. The Lord knows those who are his. And let everyone, everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. What does it mean to be in Amaziah's league? Number one, it is to have the right start. We are going some places tonight yeah, yeah, in this lesson, so um, I'm going to pick it up. So is to have the right start. Amaziah was in part influenced by the godly counsel that his late father, Joash, received from Jehoiada the priest. And I'm praying that one day we will be able to talk to uh, talk about Jehoiada the priest. Uh, we have a lot to learn from that man. And um, when Amaziah began to reign, he listened at first to the counsel of the man of God who was with him. People in Amaziah's league, please listen, may be obedient and doing everything right as they start out. However, the Bible continually tells us to always examine ourselves whether we are still in the faith that we started out from a Christian background, had a spiritual experience, or even demonstrated a biblical lifestyle for a period of time does not translate to being actually saved. Track with me. Our long haul, consistent living goes a long way in showing where our heart truly belongs. We cannot live every day in a sin that affects or hurts others, uh, for example, sexual immoralities of all kinds, stealing, abortion, all those stuff affect other people. Abortion affects the baby inside the womb Science has proven that they feel pains, you see. 
So you cannot be living as a lifestyle every day in a lifestyle that hurts other people and still claim to be saved. It is simply not biblically true. No. If our faith is genuine, we will earnestly contend for it against every sin that may want to separate us from that our faith. Amaziah relied on his good start with God without questioning his unbecoming actions later in life. This marked the beginning of doom for Amaziah. Let's go to 1 John chapter 3, verse 9. 1 John, the epistle, chapter 3, verse 9. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. Now, that Bible verse is not saying you are going to be perfect. No. But you don't make sin your lifestyle. That is what the Bible is saying right there. For his seed, that is Christ's seed, the Holy Spirit, remaineth in him, in that individual, the believer. And he, the believer, cannot sin. You cannot keep sinning as a way of lifestyle because he or she is born of God. To be filled with the Holy Spirit is to be spilled of unholy things. Let me back up and say that again, that somebody was living like a Christian two years ago and they showed some fruit of the Spirit and now they are crazy and you are thinking, did they lose their faith? They never got it. To be filled with the Holy Spirit is to be spilled of unholy things. Moving on. Amaziah not only had the right start, he had the right acts. Amaziah's initial actions, when he began to reign as king in ancient Israel, were right. He did everything right. This was because he had a godly counselor and he was willing to listen to the advice of that godly counselor. It is very dangerous to not be willing to take advice from tested and trusted godly people that God could have placed in our lives. God puts his children together for spiritual safety. And I thank God, I don't have many friends, but the few I have in my life that God has given me, I cannot trade them for anything or for anyone. I mean, they can pick up what I'm missing, bam, just like that, and send the, way, the same way God uses me for them. And the same with, with my husband. He can pick my weakness just like that, you see. So God puts his children together. Not only that we can walk together and encourage ourselves, but to look at each other in the eye and say, Sister, mm -mm, you're not going to do that. That is wrong, you see. Because in that, there is safety. Only a moron thinks they know it all. A godly counselor will be able to see our blind spots and compliment us in our areas of weaknesses. A godly counselor has our best intentions at heart and their primary concern is for our spiritual character and well-being. A godly counselor, we always use the word of God to challenge you. It's not to tell you how bad you are. No, no, no. They are not out to criticize you. They are not out to pull you down. But using the word of God that you yourself will read, they will let you know, sister or brother, mm -mm, you cannot do that. 
you see. On the other hand, a good counselor, however, also with her best intentions at heart, as her emotional comfort, as their main focus, you see. In my inner circle, I have good counselors and I have godly counselors. They are all godly women. I thank God for that. But um, some, they, they, they just don't, they, 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 they don't want to see me as sad or depressed. So they are like, yeah, it would be fine, sister. You know, <laughs> they would rather be praying. But there's one, she will say, oh, no, sister Josephine. No, nope. you know. She will stand toe-toe -to with me. And I'm grateful to God for all those uh, personalities because we also need to be encouraged as well as challenged, you see. That is why it is necessary that we let God choose our inner circle for us. Such relationships will totally rest upon sharing the word of God and Prayer. I tell ladies when they come around for counseling, if you have a friend in your life and your friendship is not based on Bible study and prayer, you're going to be gossiping. You may say, oh no, it's like Joseph and Zaya. We don't do that. Really? You are going to end up gossiping. Seriously. We should show appreciation to God for godly counselors and good counselors by willing to consider the advice of godly counselors. Amaziah began a slow journey into calamity when he told his godly counselor to keep quiet. In the plain language, he told the prophet, shut up. Who made you my counselor? That's what he said. He said, who made you a counselor to the king? We not only need to check our actions for motives because that is the basis for which God will reward us. We should also check our hearts. If our hate to listen to tested godly cancers is not because we hate to hear the truth. I'm telling you. I mean... I will pick up stuff with my husband um, a lot of times, but thank God the Holy Spirit is really dealing with me now. And I'll say, how, why, how, how come you spoke like that the other time? That's not right. And the Holy Spirit will say, Josephine Zion, he could have said it the, you know, in a way you didn't like, but that is not your main problem. Your main problem was he told you the truth and you know i'm like yeah you see so we should check our hearts why am i trying to push this person that god has placed in my life away is it because he or she doesn't speak right or because he's telling the truth and i don't want to hear the truth we need to check our heart Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verses 9 to 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verses 9 to 10. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. Verse 10. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him. And when the Bible says woe, it means real calamity. Woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. Listen, the journey of life is too difficult to go alone. And the spiritual journey of faith is even more difficult. You don't have it all. You don't have all the answers. Oh no, you are not smart as you think you are. I'm not even smart at all. And that's why God puts us together as his children. You will do yourself a lot of favor by listening to tested and trusted godly voices in your life. A godly cancer may hurt, 
but it's to cure you. A good cancer may lure, but can kill you. A godly cancer may hurt, but it's to cure you. A good cancer may lure, but can kill you. Moving on. The third problem that Amaziah and people in his league have is half heart. Amaziah's heart began to drift when he saw the idols of the people of Seir. Now, Mansia, that's the people he went to uh, fight against and he conquered them uh, after he fought with the Edomites. And he killed all of them, he, he conquered them, then he brought their idols to Jerusalem and he set it up and started to worship it. How stupid is that? And the, the man of God, he said, King, the people whose idols could not deliver from your hand and you killed them and now you brought that same idol and you are worshipping it. Does that make sense? He said, shush, you see. Amaziah's fantasy to worship idols could have been out of the sacrificing in high places passed down by his predecessors. Uh, in those times, people had uh, different places, they called high places, where they would go offer their burnt offerings and sacrifices, uh, which God said in the book of Deuteronomy not to do. He said they should bring all their sacrifices to the place he would choose, which was in Jerusalem. But over time, it became normal, you see. So maybe that was part of his problem that made him to have fantasy, to worship graven images. Nevertheless, Amaziah had the opportunity to walk away from the temptation of idol worship like his great-great-grandchildren, Ezekiah and Josiah did. These were even way younger. They, they were like three or four generations after Amaziah. And the high places were passed down to them as well, but they rejected it. They destroyed it, you see. But because Amaziah's heart was never totally for God, it was very easy for him to follow the evil desire of his heart. There are only two individuals who can sincerely tell if our heart is totally for God. You. Me, I can tell if my heart is truly for God. You can tell. And then the Holy Spirit. However, since the Bible tells us that it's even possible for our heart to even deceive us if we don't let the Holy Spirit take charge, that is, then it is most advisable to even narrow that truth to only one source, the Holy Spirit. Through the Word of God. If you want to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, open your Bible. Open your Bible. Don't go to your pastor. Don't go to your to, to a prophet. Don't go. No. Open your Bible and the Holy Spirit will speak to you. The Holy Spirit can never speak error. The God of truth can never tell a lie. No. He will tell us if our heart is indeed for God or not. And Amaziah asked God why he was having such a strange evil fantasy to idols. His kingship and his life could have been saved, you see. When uh, Rebecca uh, became pregnant, the wife of Isaac, and she was having a problem with her pregnancy, she went to ask the Lord, she said, why is this happening to me? And then the Lord spoke that there are two nations in your womb, you see. If we ask, the Lord will tell us what's going on, you see. He even promised, he said, ask of me, you see. If, if he himself said we should ask, then we are allowed to ask questions, you see. 
Let's go to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 33, verses 2 to 3. Jeremiah 33, 2 and 3. Thus says the Lord who made it. Made what? The Lord who made your heart. The Lord who made you. The Lord who formed it to establish it is the one who touched your heart and it began to beat in your mother's womb. The Lord is his name. Hallelujah. Call to me. This is the Lord speaking to us now. He himself is saying, call to me. And I will answer you. And show you great and mighty things. Which you do not know. If the Lord says, call to me. Then he wants us to approach him. So, if you are having some um, strange feelings about your spirituality, or you are not even sure, hey, open the Bible, go on your knees, and ask God, am I truly saved? If I die right now, am I going to heaven? Do I have a place in your place? If we speak to your heart. But to not want to know is to want to keep feeding on lies, like Amaziah. To choose the rules is to choose to lose. To choose the rules is to choose to lose. Moving on. The last thing that the Holy Spirit was able to point out for me from the terrible ending of Amaziah's life was that he, ha he had a hard heart. And the same goes for everybody in Amaziah's league. They always have a hard heart. Amaziah's ruin became complete by his unwillingness to make a U-turn when faced with the truth. Amaziah chose to harden against the truth because, listen to this, he enjoyed the fake freedom of spiritual lawlessness that idol worship gave him. Listen, people that have sex outside of marriages, they enjoy it. Oh yeah. And when you talk to them, they know what they are doing is wrong. It's adultery or fornication if you are not married. Or people that go about stealing, shoplifting shops. They enjoy it. They are having good stuff for no um, price at all. Well, free of the thing. So they see it as sport. They enjoy it. But if you tell them, do you know what you are doing is wrong? Oh yeah, in their heart, they do. They know is wrong. But at the moment, they just like the thought of having a free stuff or having a free sex, which is not. Because in the end, they're going to pay for it one way or the other, you see. The same problem was what Amaziah had. He was just enjoying bowing down to this graven image that he didn't have to think about what he was thinking about in his heart because God, the God of heaven, was looking at his heart. That freed him up. A lot of people are like that today. Do whatever you like. You are not accountable. So they walk away and they don't want to have anything to do with the God of the Bible. You're deceiving yourself. Every genuine believer or imitation believer stands to have the faith, F-A-T-E, of Amaziah, unless they change. If God is speaking to you as a genuine believer to straighten, to straighten your faith walk and you refuse, you are in danger of losing rewards in heaven. That is, if you don't die before your time, because God can take you home if you are too stubborn as a child of God. Now, if you are a fake believer, a tear, 
among wheat. And God is telling you to surrender and become a genuine believer and you refuse, you are in danger of going, watch this, to the lake of fire. Oh yeah. The lake of fire and brimstone. Oh yeah. If you harden your heart, your choice can either deny you of an earthly rest in God, if you're a believer, or eternal rest with God, if you're a fake believer that refuses to change. Either way, God will not be held responsible for the outcome of your choice. Oh no. You choose your choice, and then your choice chooses you. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 29, verse 1, and I'll be reading from New International Version. Proverbs 29, 1. Whoever remains stiff-necked, that is stubborn, after many rebukes, that is corrections, will suddenly be destroyed without remedy. Snap! Bam! That's it. You're gone. That's it. To remain so is to become cold until you become hold in your false hold. You have an enemy. His name is called the devil. I have an enemy. If you keep hardening your heart against the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, to remain so is to become cold until you become hold in your false hold. So, what have we done so far? What does it mean to be in Amaziah's league? It is to have the right start. That is to rely on how we started out and fail to examine our current state, current spiritual state. Is to have the right acts, to be concerned with showing the right actions. People are looking at you and they are going, isn't she a wonderful Christian? Instead of if the motive is right. If you are doing the right thing and your motive is not right, you are altogether un unacceptable to God. Is to have a half heart. To choose to yield to our fancies instead of yielding to biblical truth is to have a hard heart, is to fail to repent because we prefer the enjoyment of sin rather than consider the consequences of sin. Do you check where you stand in your faith? Huh? When last have you checked your motive? Huh? Always remember, we are either progressing or retrogressing. Our faith walk is never static. No. Repent if you are coasting. Because when you are coasting, you're going down here. Or keep fighting the good fight of faith as the need may apply to you and to me. Now, if you're an imitation Christian, a fake Christian, a tear among the weeds, a baptized pagan, or you are a stark pagan, an uh, unbeliever, uh, agnostic or atheist, whatever you go by, listen, you stand to lose it all, everything. You start to lose it. When you come face to face with God, the Lord Jesus Christ, one day, oh yeah, you're going to stand before him and see him face to face. To be in Amaziah's league is to be miserable in life and to be missed at his table in eternity if you don't change. However, here is the good news. That can change right here, right now. 
If you are willing to come out of the devil's prison, a link is coming up. Follow that link. And you will receive further instructions on how you can come out of the devil's prison. All right? Father God, you are beautiful. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for delivering this message. Father, I pray that you help me, give me the grace to keep walking the narrow road. I pray for all the listeners and viewers who are believers, genuine believers, that you will give them the grace, O oh Lord, to stay on track. And for as many that are going to want to know Jesus' page, who want to go get out of the devil's prison, Father, I pray you give them the understanding of your word, that they may receive the emancipation that comes through the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father God. For in Jesus' name, I will pray. Amen. And amen. Oh, I love Lord Jesus. I will see you next week. Only if the Lord Jesus has not split the sky open. Jesus died for us all so we can have life. Come to him and receive life, believe on him and thirst no more. Good news reporting is all we do, seeing souls saved is our ministry. Okay.